If you're a small business or B2B company looking to get serious about email marketing without the tech headaches, HubSpot might be exactly what you need. Though best known for its CRM, HubSpot also offers one of the most user-friendly email marketing platforms around. In this video, we'll show you how to set up your marketing hub account, create a branded email template, build smart contact lists, create forms, and automate follow-ups. Plus, we'll throw in a few tips to help your email land in the inbox and not the spam folder. Let's dive in. HubSpot offers different plans called hubs, like marketing, sales, service, and more. If you're interested in email marketing, you'll obviously select the marketing plan. We've included a link in the description to make it super easy for you. Once you've done that, you'll land in the main dashboard. For email marketing, you'll mainly use three sections of the platform. Marketing, for emails, forms, landing pages, and automation. Contacts, to manage your CRM and lists. And settings, for authentication, branding, and compliance. To keep things tidy, we recommend you first customize your portal name and add your company branding. Go to Settings, Account Defaults, Upload your logo, Set your company name, and Time Zone. This info will automatically be used in your email footers, which helps you keep emails compliant with canned spam and GDPR. Before sending emails, it's critical to set up your email sending domain. This helps improve deliverability and ensures your emails comply with authentication standards like SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. However, a quick heads up, connecting a custom domain is not available on HubSpot's free plan, which isn't ideal, especially if you want your emails to look professional and avoid spam folders. So if you want to do this in HubSpot, you'll need to upgrade to a paid subscription. If you're on a paid plan, go to Settings, Content, Domains and URLs, connect a domain, then choose Email Sending. HubSpot will walk you through setting up the necessary DNS records with your domain provider, including SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. It might sound technical, but the step-by-step -step instructions make it so manageable, even if you're not tech savvy. Once verified, your domain will show a green connected status. This is a key step to help your emails land in inboxes instead of spam. You already know that personalized emails tend to outperform generic ones. So if you're planning to personalize emails with info like industry, company size, or lead score, then it's definitely worth creating custom contact properties early on. To do this simply, head to Settings, Properties, Create Property. For example, if you're B2B, you might create properties like industry, company size, lead status, sales rep owner. These custom fields can then be added to forms and used in segmentation, personalization, or automated workflows. Now let's talk contacts, the foundation of any good email marketing strategy. In HubSpot, every contact can be tracked, segmented, and used to personalize your campaigns. In fact, HubSpot CRM is one of its strongest features, and the best news is it's available even on the free plan. But how do you actually get your contacts into HubSpot? Well, there are a few ways, but the most common one, especially if you're switching from another provider, is to upload them via a CSV file. But before you hit that upload button, here's a quick tip. Clean your list. That means removing inactive or outdated email addresses, duplicate entries, or any contacts who didn't explicitly give permission to be emailed before uploading. You'll save yourself a huge headache because uploading a messy list can lead to a high bounce rate, spam complaints, and ultimately poor deliverability. If you need help with this at all, we've linked our top email verification tools in the video description. Okay, now that you have that sparkling clean list, head to the CRM tab, then click on Contacts in the dropdown. In the top right corner, you'll see an Import button. Go ahead and click that. From here, choose Import File from Computer. You'll be asked a couple of quick questions like what kind of data the file contains, and a few more. Now, upload your CSV file. After you upload the file, HubSpot will show you a preview and ask you to map your columns to the right contact properties. For example, if your spreadsheet has a column labeled first name, you'll map that to HubSpot's built-in first name property. Same goes for email, map that to email, and so forth. 
If you've created custom properties like lead source or company size, you can map those too. HubSpot will automatically save these settings so future imports will be even faster. Once you're done mapping, click Finish Import, and that's it. Your contacts are now live inside HubSpot. You'll see them listed in your main CRM view where you can search, filter, and click into individual contact properties to see things like email history, form submissions, and website activity. Once your contacts are uploaded, you'll want to organize them into lists. Click on the Contacts tab again and choose Lists. Here you can create two list types, static or active. Static lists are fixed and don't change unless you manually update them. They're great for one-off imports or small groups. Active lists update automatically based on filters like who opened your last email or filled out a form. So let's say you want to send a follow-up campaign only to contacts who've clicked on a certain link. With an active list, HubSpot can handle that for you in real time. To create such a list, just hit Create List, choose Active, and then set your filters. You could filter by criteria like include any contact that has opened any marketing email in the last 30 days, or include any contact whose life cycle stage is lead. Once saved, the list will always reflect those criteria. No manual sorting required. But before we jump into building emails, let's set your brand style first. Here, you can upload your logo, defined brand colors, choose default fonts, and set a global footer for all your emails. This saves a ton of time when creating campaigns. Every new email will automatically apply your brand settings, helping you stay consistent and looking professional. You can also create saved sections, which are reusable blocks like headers or disclaimers that can be dropped into future emails. It's a huge time saver for teams or anyone sending regular newsletters. Okay, now that your brand kit is ready, let's create your first email campaign. Go to Marketing, Email, then click Create Email. You'll see three types, regular, which are one-time campaigns like newsletters, automated, which are used in workflows, and finally, blog RSS for auto-updating blog digests. Choose regular and select a template. HubSpot's library includes layouts for promotions, product updates, and holiday themes. You can also start from scratch. Mm, let's pick a template we like. Next, use the drag and drop editor to customize your email. Add images, text blocks, CTAs, and personalization tokens like first name. Keep your design clean though, and make sure your main message really stands out. At the top, fill in your subject line and preview text, which is what subscribers will see when they receive your email in their inbox. If you need any help with this, we've linked our free subject line tester in the description. It lets you preview how your subject line will appear on various mobile devices and even suggest some emojis for you to use. Okay, next, choose your recipients. You can send your email to a full list or a filtered segment. HubSpot also lets you exclude recipients, for example, recent buyers or unengaged contacts. Finally, test your email on both desktop and mobile. Then either send it immediately or schedule it for later. Of course, sending a campaign is only part of your overall email marketing strategy. To grow your email list, you'll need sign-up forms. HubSpot makes this really easy. Head to Marketing, Forms, then click Create Form. You can choose from embedded forms, pop-ups, and a form to capture blog comments. Pick a template that suits your site and audience. For now, let's go with a standard form type. Give it a name for internal reference, then drag in the fields you want to display. For example, you could include first name, email, and company name if you're a B2B. Make sure to customize the submit button text and thank you text. If you're collecting data from the EU, enable GDPR consent checkboxes from the Options panel. You can also set double opt-in from Settings, then Marketing, Email. Once your form is ready, you can embed it on your site using the code provided or create a landing page directly in HubSpot. Here's a handy bonus tip. Even on HubSpot's free plan, you can trigger a follow-up email automatically when someone submits a form. No upgrades needed. To set this up, Go back to your form, click its name, then hit Edit. In the editor, look for the Workflows Automation icon on the left-hand side. It looks like a small branching flowchart. Click it, and you'll see two automation options. To send a follow-up email right after someone submits, 
click Create This Workflow under Send an email after form submission. Or to build a slightly more customized flow, choose Create New Workflow under Create Your Own Simple Workflow. In the slide and panel that appears, choose A Contact Submitted a Form as your trigger. Then select the action, for example, send a specific email, add a delay, or include more steps using the plus button. Once your flow is set up, don't forget to toggle it on to the next workflow name. It's a simple yet powerful way to deliver lead magnets or just welcome new subscribers. And it works great even if you're just getting started on the free plan. After your campaign goes out, you'll naturally want to track performance and see results. Go to Marketing, Email, then click on your Sent Campaign. HubSpot will show you Open Rates, Click Rates, Bounce and Unsubscribe Rates, top clicked links, and click maps to see where users interacted most. This data helps you learn what's working and what can improve. Say your open rate is low, then maybe test a new subject line. Or if clicks are down, maybe revisit your call to action. Also, remember if you're on a paid plan, you can use the super helpful A-B testing tool to optimize subject lines, content, and send times. And that's a wrap. You've successfully completed your HubSpot email marketing crash course. As a reminder, we've covered how to set up your account, upload and segment contacts, create branded emails, create forms and automated follow-ups, and track your campaign's success. If you found this HubSpot tutorial helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more email marketing tips and tricks. And remember to check out the video description for links to our subject line tester, a written tutorial, and a detailed HubSpot review. See you next time.